Today we're going to talk cameras, camera equipment, the EOS R. Stopped by for coffee on the way in. Today is takeout coffee. It was that kind of day and it'll do, as they say in sideways, it's quaffable. EOS R, let's go. Okay, let's level set a little bit. Why would I choose what camera I choose? Let's talk about what I do. I'm a professional portrait photographer. I sell printed canvas, uh, paintings, fine art black and whites. All products that are actually printed and go on the wall, like you see behind me here. So all my criteria revolve around that. And I always recommend that everyone rate their photography based on how it looks printed. Professional, amateur, any other kind of way. I think that that is photography in its truest sense. Digital photography has its place and I'm eternally grateful that digital photography came along because of what it gives me as a professional. However, it takes away a few things too. So, having said all that, what I have been doing for years and years, um, I have been using this guy, Canon 5D Mark III. And let me tell you, it's a really good camera. Um, I have not had any complaints with it. Uh, it could do most of what I wanted it to do. Um, I, I think there's, there's things that somewhere in the back of my mind it was lacking, but nothing that I couldn't do my business with. Most of my portraits are under 60 inches. So right off the bat, I want to be able to sell portraits 60 inches and greater, so that will require a little bit more megapixels, not a ton more. Um, so first off, the 30 megapixels of the EOS R was very appealing. That it wasn't 45 or 50 or more. A couple of reasons there. One is file size is kind of crazy. Uh, let me tell you, if you're if you actually need 50 plus megapixels, you really probably ought to be going medium format because the pixel size itself is larger and will give a much nicer effect than squeezing more and more onto a 35 millimeter sensor. My opinion, totally my opinion. I believe that there is a, a balance to be reached between pixel size and megapixels on the chip. So for me, 30 megapixels was a sweet spot. It's 10 megapixels more than the Mark III which definitely appealed to me. So big, big gain right there off the bat that I got to the 30 megapixels. Okay, another thing that you'll get to know about me over time, the more of my videos that you watch, is that I'm not a gearhead. I don't lust after the latest and greatest cameras. The camera to me is a, the same as a hammer is to a carpenter. It's a means to get to my end. So while I appreciate wonderful tools, and believe me, today's cameras are wonderful tools, they're not, a, they're not an end unto themselves for me. So that's one reason that I was dealing with the Mark III for so many years. I was happy with the portraits it was doing up to a point. But you have to keep up with modern cameras. It's not like in the film days where a new emulsion was what you might want, not so much a new camera body. So. Moving on, EOS R. So, EOS R, now, let me tell you, if you were in the same generation of cameras I was with the Mark III and you haven't done mirrorless, oh baby, when you see the autofocus in the mirrorless, your jaw will drop as mine did. It is a quantum leap in what you can do with autofocus. And let me tell you, that's big for me. That is a really big thing for me because one of my favorite uh, portraits to do, and one of my specialties actually is shooting children, little ones. They run around, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> so having eye lock, face lock on autofocus and, and just a bajillion points, I'm not a gearhead, I don't know how many it has. So that, as soon as I started using it was, oh, game changer. Uh, quantum leap, game changing with the autofocus. Uh, again, Big win, right? And it's like, why'd you wait so long? Well, I'm, I'm pretty good with the focus on the Mark III. I can move points really fast. If you struggle with that, move to mirrorless really fast. You won't regret it. 
Uh, so keeping focus with the little ones, big, big deal. Uh, another thing is, and I, again, I, I'm not the guy to come to for numbers. Uh, I know it has a better dynamic range, and I saw that the first time I pulled the files out. Yeah, it's noticeably different. You will get um, much more detail in the shadows. Highs will block up much slower. Um, I, I don't care about quantifying it. I care when I, pull the, when I pull the files out, go to do my work on them, and they're like, whoa, they're better. You know, they're better. For me, better. Not measurement on a scale, not by some objective standard. Better to these eyes. That's really what matters to me. So yeah, there's a dynamic range improvement there. I can't say if there's a color science improvement, it's still a Canon sensor. I notice there's a little color difference. Um, I, I'm, I have a lot of moving targets right now. I'm using the new Lightroom, so there's all kind of new settings happening as I'm using the new camera. Uh, so, I don't know. Somebody who knows more about it than me would be the place to find out about that. Okay, those are some pretty big wins there. The other really important thing is if you're already invested in the camera system, you've got some glass, right? <laughs> I have some glass. So the fact that the R can use my glass with the adapter, big, big win. Not that I don't want to shift to the RF lenses. Uh, I've heard great things about them. I'm, I'm certain they're great. Uh, they're not cheap though. Um, and I don't buy camera equipment as a hobby. It's got to pay for itself for me. So. Uh, being able to leverage my current glass with the adapter, big deal, big deal. And I can tell you from the experience I've shot, I've maybe shot 20, 30 sessions with it so far, uh, I don't see any uh, handicap with using the adapter. I've heard some people on the interweb say there's maybe an improvement. Hmm? I don't know. But it's certainly no handicap for me. So here we go. I mean, I've got, I've already got Megapixels, dynamic range, using my own glass, and autofocus. Done. It was time to go. It was time to increase. Now, now, <laughs> there are other Canon cameras. I'm sticking with Canon, again, because of the glass. There are other mirrorless cameras that are wonderful, I'm certain. Uh, I, I am not a purist about the system I have. I just am happy with it. So when you, when you look at... Why the R? Why not the R6, the R5, the R3, the R whatever? Because of what I just said, that was a clear win for me. Everything on top of that would be extra. And it falls under the category of want instead of need. There's only one feature that I'd really like to have, but I don't shoot weddings anymore, so not really a big thing, and that's dual cards. Is it worth the extra $2,500 for me to move up to an R5 for dual cards? Not right now. Um, honestly, no. Uh, that, that's just, that's a lot of money for the feature that I care about moving to the R5 for. Now, the R5, wow, tons of, 45 megapixels. But remember what I said earlier, I'm not looking for 45 megapixels in a, 35 millimeter camera. In fact, that's not really a big positive for me. On two fronts, huge file size and a small pixel size. I understand, I can, I can hear so many voices in my ears saying, but the technology, but the technology. Yes, probably, but physics won't ever change. Something that's being crammed into a smaller space always will have to work harder than something that has more room to work. Physics, I'm a simple guy. <laughs> so it falls to me why the R instead of the R6, the R5, the R3 is because it moved me ahead a lot from where I was. And to me, when you're making a camera decision, that's the kind of things you need to think about. How far do you have to go before it's overkill, before it's budget kill, before it's whatever kill, <laughs> right? Um, I'm not a gearhead, I'm not, there, there's nothing about any of my suggestions that are uh, motivating me to tell you this other than if you want a realistic opinion of someone who uses it for work, not for just fun, 
I thought I would give it. If you find my suggestions valuable, if you find what I have to say worth it to you, if it makes you think, would you hit like on the video? If you like what I do with the channel, would you hit subscribe? Hey, good luck if you're looking for a camera. Uh, I hope this has been helpful and cheers. Good to see you. See you in the next video.